Welcome to the Bothy Therapy Room. So as we wait for a few more to join, I know that there's going to be people joining from all over the world this evening and it's 7pm in the UK. So I know uh, in America you might be early afternoon there, but I'm looking forward to sharing some tips and techniques for an aromatherapy massage. I'm also going to show you how to do some kinesiology. So I'm really glad to bring you these tips now and that you can watch this at a later date on Catch Up if you wish. I've got Jez with me who I'll be introducing in a moment, my lovely hubby, that I will be Massaging with a back, neck and shoulders aromatherapy massage. Okay, so we're now seven o'clock and I'm going to introduce Jez. So if you want to sit on the couch, Jez, and sure. I'll do some essential oil <clears throat> kinesiology. Okay, hi guys. So... I'm Victoria, this is hubby Jez, and we're going to be doing a back, neck and shoulders aromatherapy massage. First of all, I'm going to show you how to do some kinesiology. So, I've got some essential oils that I have prepared. quite a few here and I've put them into two camps. One camp for stimulating essential oils and one for relaxing. Both very good for back massage. So without you knowing what any of them are, mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask you to do a little finger and thumb as a kinesiology muscle test. Okay. So hold them together nice <coughs> and tightly. If you want to follow this at home, you may want to ask your partner or your friend to put their little finger to their thumb and hold them together nice and tightly. That's called an opponent's polysis and it's a really good test for muscle strength to see if you can hold that as a, a strong indicator muscle, an SIM. So let's see what Jez's is like. So hold together and hold. Okay, that's really strong. There is absolutely no movement in that whatsoever. And then in the other hand, I'd like you to hold that and touch it to you. And then bring this up and hold. Really strong. Are you going to be strong in all of them? <laughs> I don't know. We'll and see. hold. Okay, really strong. So, so far we've had frankincense and sweet marjoram. Next one. And hold. Okay, so that one opened. hope you can see that at home. So that one's not so strong. And hold. Okay, <laughs> so we've got two that uh, weren't so strong, Roman chamomile and ylang ylang. Um, this last large one and hold. Okay, opened again. That's interesting, isn't it? So that mm. one was lavender. And then we've got one in the middle camp. This is partly stimulating, partly relaxing and hold. Okay, opened marginally. Mm -hmm. So a couple more to test and hold really strong. Okay, we've got three good ones so far and hold really strong. So those last two were cinnamon and sweet thyme. Hold it to you, touching it and hold really strong. That one's ginger. Last couple and hold really strong. We're gonna have a choice here then and hold. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm asking Jez's body whether his body is happy with these particular essential oils. And the body, if you like, the subconscious, the psyche, will know immediately the properties of that oil and whether it's good for Jez today, this evening. So we have got nutmeg, rosemary, ginger, 
we've got cinnamon, sweet thyme, frankincense and sweet marjoram. So a lot of herbs in the mix there. Um, do you have any preference or do you want me to put them together or I don't mind? I think you to put them together. Yeah? Yeah. So I would normally like to go for a, um, a base, a middle and a top note because that's a perfect synergistic blend for the bass note to hold the top note, which is volatile. And then the middle note is just that lovely, stable, balanced oil in the middle. So if I'm looking for a top note, we've got um, rosemary, although rosemary can be medium. Um, and then base note, we've got quite a few here. We've got frankincense, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and then a couple of middle notes, thyme and marjoram. So I would always go for marjoram for a back massage, so that's good. And then base note, it's gonna be quite spicy, or we can go more relaxing. Let's go relaxing. Yeah, because it's evening and you wanna have a good night's sleep tonight. Absolutely, mm. yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm clearing all the others away and then I'm just going to have a look to see if you've posed any questions. Lots of little essential oil noises. So I'm just going to add these, I don't know if you can see me doing this, to the heating organic sunflower oil that I've got warming on an aroma stone, which is my form of heating the oil here. And I'm adding three drops of each oil. So we've got rosemary, frankincense and marjoram. Lovely. Would you like to smell a little of it, Jess? Mm. On the inside of your forearm, maybe? Right, see what you think. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. It, it's a shame you can't smell this, actually, but... It's very subtle. Do you think? Mm. Oh, okay. Quite subtle. Mm. Well, we just have had a chilli meal, so maybe <laughs> it's because we, we could still taste the chilli. Maybe. But, yeah, the, the rosemary is really nice through there. It's very herby. Mm. The sweet marjoram, another herb, it's the one that I've got growing all over the garden. Yeah. And then we've got um, the frankincense, which is so much more relaxing and obviously very spiritual, reminds you of churches. So I'm just going to have a look to see what questions... Oh, I don't know how to bring the questions up on here. Oh, hang on, here we go. No... Oh, that's a shame. I don't know how to bring the questions up. Sorry, guys, this isn't going to look good, is it? Uh, all right, I'm going to have to answer them afterwards. Sorry about that. But hello, everyone who's commented, and please, please do put your questions down. I will get round to answering them. So, while Jez is preparing for a lovely back, neck and shoulders massage, and if I can just unclip your mic and put it on the couch. And then in a moment, if you'd like to take your T-shirt off, yep. leave everything else on, and I will just prepare the tissue and then lie on your front with your face in the face hole and I'll cover you with a nice hot towel. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I'm going to bring you with me. Okay, so I want to show you my essential oils. Okay, so we have here lots of essential oils and the ones that I'm going to be using, as I say, are frankincense, rosemary, and sweet marjoram. There we go. Now I use about 50 different essential oils and all up here as well. I use a range of companies. So Jez is now lying on the couch. I'm going to be covering Jez with a nice warmed towel. Mm. 
What vitamins would I recommend for cold with muscle aches? Well, definitely vitamin C. Um, I have done my nutritional training, but I don't advertise myself as a nutritionist. I'm more of a holistic practitioner using alternative therapies, like holistic therapies. But yes, get yourself some echinacea, I would, and some vitamin C, uh, some vitamin D, or some sunshine if you can. So I'm just going to bring you a bit nearer so that you can see the massage. There we are, that's not a bad angle. There we go, guys. Are you okay, you comfy? Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so using this warmed organic sunflower oil, and sometimes I put extra carrier oils in the mix. So for instance, I really like using carrot oil, avocado carrier, also evening primrose. Um, and for my Indian head massages, I really like using sesame seed oil or coconut, it depends if there is heat or cool in the body. So that's going in really beautifully. That's what I love about sunflower oil. It's really good for massaging. It's full of vitamins. Okay. And it smells amazing. So those Lovely essential oils, frankincense, rosemary, and sweet marjoram. Okay, so I'm just introducing both hands to the back in a very light aromatherapy effleurage at the moment. Up the neck, down each side of the spine. Beautiful. And now, Jez, if you could give me three nice long breaths. You might want to follow along at home. So I've got really wide legs in order to give my body some stability and therefore I can give a lot of pressure if need be during the massage. It's really good as a therapist to basically do a little dance when you're massaging. We shouldn't be feet together and leaning over. We should be fairly wide legs, soft knees with a good bend in them, ready to Dance your way around the couch. Okay, so at the moment I'm just getting an idea of how Jez's back feels, what pockets of tension there may be. And I'm starting to think about what techniques to use. Now for aromatherapy massage, we don't tend to use percussion moves. So for instance, hacking and cupping and vibration type of moves, they're not really part of an aromatherapy massage. Aromatherapy is more for lymph drainage, clearing waste materials. And it works beautifully for relaxation and stress relief. So really good for an evening's massage before bed. So I'm using both thumbs now on each side of the neck. I'm going to be coming back to the neck in much more detail using several techniques. But for now, I just want to introduce my hands so that Josie's body knows where I'm going to be working. So I hope you, do, you guys have had a good day, or if it's your morning, that you will have a lovely day today. It's been 
mixture of everything here today in the UK. I put some washing out on a very hot morning, only to realise when I was working later on that we had a lot of rain and my washing was hanging very limply. So I waited for the sun and the wind to come out again and it I managed to get it dry, so that was good. So we've had a bit of everything here today in the UK. So yeah, carrying on with the effleurage. And you'll notice with effleurage, it's really important to cover the whole back. So I've got my hands half overlapping at the sacrum. I'm putting a lot of pressure on. I'm separating the hands in a W shape. And then coming up, my fingers are pushing over the soft tissue each side of the neck and I'm describing the back by actually going round the shoulder points coming gently back down so most of the pressure is upwards towards the heart and repeating lovely round gently down and back up oh does that feel good Jess it was great. Yeah? Were you asleep then, Jess? Um, borderline. Borderline, okay. It doesn't take me long. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I want to work a little bit more on the shoulders. So I'm going to look at the scapula nearest to you. And I'm using my finger points to find the edge of the shoulder blade. So it's nice to use your hands as a team and I'm finding that edge and then alternate overlapping strokes strongly around the edge of that scapula and then if you want to and if the body is fit enough to you can move that scapula nudging it up and down and that's really good because waste materials and toxins like sitting on the top and underneath that, that scapula, that flat plate of bone. And without really good exercise or yoga or a massage, they won't be stimulated to move. So this is what gets them shifted and it'll stop stiff shoulders and, and that feeling of tightness in the shoulders. So you need to move those, those waste materials and then using my knuckles over the top of the scapula in a medium pressure. Should go nice and rosy as this is doing, which is good. And then over to the other scapula, tracing that line round the outside. I love the way that this scapula are called wings, angels' wings, because they look just like you're wearing a lovely pair of wings to a fancy dress party. And then knuckling over the top of the scapula. Lovely, and then pushing those toxins up over the shoulder and away down to the lymph factory in the chest. And back to an effleurage. So the effleurage is the staple move. It's the technique that you just keep coming back to in order to reassure and, and anchor the client. And then coming up to petrissage, I might just bring you a little bit nearer. Ooh. Getting there, getting there. It's 
Sorry about that. Okay, so I've got you a little bit nearer. And then I'm going to be doing a petrissage each side of the neck using my thumbs and then down to the soft tissue each side of the neck and lower down between the scapula and generally in an upwards motion pushing up using perhaps all the fingers in this manner and then knuckling pushing the knuckles up and separating. I'm not pressing on the spine itself, on each side of the spine, coming up and over. There we are, lovely. I've got quite a few of you joined in now, so hello to everyone, wherever you are in the world watching. I know I might have some family and friends joining, so thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in on this Monday, Monday evening for us in the UK. So you'll notice whatever you've agitated with the massage, you then need to push up and over those shoulders. And this feels really good, especially on this area here. So I'm pushing up. And we don't want to create stagnant energy or uh, thicker, thicker fascia here, which can develop with poor posture. So we're trying to clear that, that fascia through and then up to the neck. So I said earlier I'd be doing some more neck techniques. This is one of my favourite ones that I is most likely a good technique that lots of schools use, but I feel that I've developed that out of my own head because I haven't been taught this particular one. So when you bring your hand around, you're hooking around that fascia and then bringing it over in an overlapping gesture. And the skin now, the muscle is going really warm around this area, it feels good bring the neck into play as well. The length of the neck into that little corner there and then from the shoulder point upwards. Lovely. I'm going to do the same the other side. From the shoulder point into the soft fascia and up around the neck which feels fantastic. Necks do such a hard job for us, working most of the day and they don't get much of a break. Lovely. And then I'm going softly down and strongly up the sides in a backward effleurage. Softly down, round the hips and strongly up. give you a different view again. Come with me this way. <laughs> Just going to raise you up a little. There we are. Okay, so massaging now further down the lower back. Just raise you so you can see my, my strokes as well. There we are. <laughs> okay, that effleurage again. And now around the waist, the lower thoracic. So this is the lower thoracic area here, the lower ribs. Then the waist, which is the obliques. 
then round the hips. Really good. I wonder how many of you are following along at home. Up each side of the spine, strong fingers, up that erector spine and spine eye muscle, each side of the vertebra, strongly up, and then gently down, round the hips. You okay? Mm -hmm. Is it a bit strong? No, no, it's perfect. Oh, bless you. Okay, so I really like this technique where you're coming from the sacrum, separating the hands, splitting the hands and then fingers down to the couch and push the heel of the hands down to meet the fingers. This is really nice for the kidneys, the obliques, the waist. Of course we twist from the waist so we tend to stretch this area whether we're doing exercise or whether we're just moving around and this area really needs a good massage occasionally. Lovely. And now, as a lot of you will know, one of my favourite areas, the kidneys. So the kidneys are located just above the waist, each side of the spine. And because our liver is on our right hand side and is rather large, the right hand kidney is slightly lower than the left hand kidney. So I'm exaggerating the placement, but something like that. And then we massage with knuckles into those two kidneys. And kidneys love being warm. They love a good massage, they love movement and stimulation. They love a good drink of water. And when we walk, our hips, our pelvis, naturally massages the kidneys. So it's when you're having your next walk, become body aware and tune in to what your hip bones, your, your pelvis, is doing around the back area. And you'll notice it's a bit like a spiralling figure of eight. And your kidneys will love you to bits for massaging them in that manner. Lovely, so that should feel really good for the kidneys. And then obviously coming back to an effleurage again, doing a couple of these, always including the shoulder points, back to the hips. And now I'm coming up to the sacrum, which is the bottom of the spine, well nearly at the bottom, the coccyx is at the very bottom, and I'm massaging with knuckles upwards, and outwards and I'm actually putting on quite a lot of pressure. I've got one foot right behind me, right at the bottom of the couch and the other foot knee bent pointing forwards so that I can rock my body forwards and backwards and therefore put quite a lot of pressure on this bone here, the sacrum. Now the sacrum can take a lot of weight and in fact I don't know if it's just me when I'm having a mass massage, but I love the sacrum being massaged very strongly and a lot of strength being put on that bone. It just feels so anchoring and grounding. The Chinese call the sacrum the sacred bone and at S2, so the sacrum is made up of five bones which are fused together. So at the second bone down, that is our pivot point. If, you, if we were to be completely ramrod straight and be put on a point of a pivot, we would pivot at this point. And so it's a really key place because also the cerebral spinal fluid comes down the spine, comes through at S2 and back up again. 
So for our nerve, our neural system, it's really important to have the um, S2 in a really good, healthy, balanced, aligned position. So now I'm going to do another neural technique. So I'm going to use two thumbs on the side of the spine and I'm actually working, touching the spine, but on the side and I'm working between two vertebra. So I've got big thumb pads and even though I'm not a very big person, I can apply quite a lot of pressure here. And I'm looking at the waist area because I'm checking in with Jez's breathing. And I normally don't mention that to clients because they tend to breathe differently when you say you're doing that. So Jez is just going to have to ignore that I've said that and just carry on breathing nice and normally and in a relaxed manner. And every time Jez breathes out, I'm going to apply a little pressure with my thumbs to this place. And then every time he breathes in, and I can feel the difference under my thumbs as well, I'm going to move along a little, find another little place each side of the vertebra, and then with an out breath, I'm going to apply that pressure again. And moving every time he breathes in. And what this achieves is it allows a resetting, a reconfiguration, if you like, of the neural system so that the nerves are stimulated in a beautiful manner to activate and work healthily through the whole body. Of course, this is a neural pathway down, down the spine, each side of the spine. So it's a really key place to activate the neural system. And normally with a normal treatment, I would apply this pressure, this technique, to each side of each vertebra. But I'm just giving you an idea here, so I'm jumping in big steps down this side of the spine. And obviously, whatever you do to one side of the body, you need to do to the other side of the body in order to balance. So I will be coming down the other side, but for now I'm going to make a straight line with my eight fingers there, and I'm coming down the side of the spine all the way down. Wonderful, okay. So coming around the other side, waiting for an in-breath and an out-breath and pressing quite firmly. And repeating the same technique all the way down the spine. You know, this is a really relaxed stage of a beautiful treatment because most of the other stages tend to be quite stimulating in comparison, even though it's an aromatherapy massage. Because this is like just pressing the pause button. So as I'm not able to see the comments, they flash up and then disappear before I'm able to read them. I wonder if one of my family might take some screenshots of them and then I can get back to you all. And maybe if there are lots of questions, I might post a video of me answering those questions. How about that? That might work. This is lovely, very relaxed. I'm 
Okay, making a straight line. Coming down the spine. Beautiful. Oh, lovely. And what am I going to come back to? That lovely relaxed effleurage, including the neck, round the shoulder points, and down. Are you comfy, Jess? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I'm just doing some overlapping hands always outwards. There are lots of lymph nodes down the sides of the trunk. So I'm clearing away from the central area outwards. This is an area, this is a technique where clients think this feels like more than one person giving them a massage. And that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Coming over one side and the other and then slowing things down. And actually the lymph is just under the surface of the skin. So I'm doing a technique that relates far more to the lymph now by working very lightly, superficially, over the top of the skin, outwards. Very calm and relaxed. I'm going to be asking Jess to turn over in a minute, but for now, I'm finishing how I started the back massage with three long stretching sweeps. a warmed towel because it's been a little bit chillier here in the UK today. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to turn over in a moment, Jess. Okay, so I've got the towels if you'd like to turn over and then I'll sort out the head area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll just sort this area out, putting the face hole back in. Hang on a sec. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just going to give you a stretch. Right, you're off the couch now, so you might want to go back up the couch okay. an inch or two. Yeah. You okay? <laughs> that was a good stretch. Was it? That was it yeah. too much? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it's the throwing of the feet at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got now got my organic sunflower oil. I'm going to introduce it to the front of the shoulders. I'm going to move you again, Harmonies. What's the best angle for you guys? How about something like this? Lovely. <laughs> over the top of the, the clavicle, the collarbone, my fingers just underneath and I'm pulling away around the shoulder points again, those beautiful shoulders, and then strongly out the neck and a nice little neck stretch. Shoulders, nice neck stretch, 
So I'm going to turn your head, let it relax, let it go, let it go. Lovely. Again, using the whole hand, sweeping around and up. So I'm coming back to that beautiful, reassuring, anchoring effleurage. Particularly concentrating on this area here, the soft tissue. Maybe I'll put my glasses on. Watching all the way from Northern Canada. How lovely. Northern Canada. We've been to some of Canada, haven't we? Mm. We've been to Quebec and uh, Montreal and Toronto and Niagara Falls. And then we took a little plane to uh, Vancouver. Lovely Vancouver. And we had a friend living on a boat there that we went to see. And then we did the Sea to Sky Highway and drove all the way through those towns and went to a, a powwow and went all the way to Calgary. We had a great trip. Oh, Ontario. Oh, lovely. Welcome. Thank you for joining. You must be in the afternoon there, I would think. Monday afternoon. Okay. So, I'm going to use my knuckles now around the shoulder point. Okay, so this is a knuckling petrissage. And round and underneath. I might get rid of this tissue. Coming up, the soft fascia there. Am I being too firm or is it okay? Oh, that's good. Yeah, do yeah. tell me if I am though, won't no, you? No, no, that's fine. Now, I love this technique. I'm going to use my thumb and trace a line down the side of what I call the gullet. So that's this area here, this is still muscle. It's before it gets to that sensitive area of the front of the throat. Tracing a line, there is a beautiful muscular line here, which feels really nice to have cleared and relieved. And then knuckling underneath, around the side and back of the neck down the front and round. So I'm gently stretching the head away at the same time, but only insofar as it wants to go. This is not forcing or making it doing, do anything it doesn't want to do. This is just coaxing and reassuring, encouraging the body to do what is good for it. And then turning the head the other way, nice and gentle. Coming down around the shoulder and up the other side. And what can happen here is the neck and head every time the massage comes up to that base of the occiput, may stretch a little bit further over, widening that gap and creating more of a stretch in the neck and the shoulder. It shows that the muscle is letting go if that's happening, which is really good. Some people, if it's their first massage or they're not familiar with the, the therapist, then they may not be fully inclined to relax and that can mean that they hold on to their muscles themselves, they don't want to let it go. Or it can be that their neck is so tight and stiff that they just can't let go of it. So that type of 
client needs quite a few treatments. And then knuckling into that soft tissue, same as the other side. And even knuckling very gently, because it's quite a strong muscle here, the sternoclidomastoid muscle on the side of the neck. Knuckling softly. Wow, you're going to sleep well tonight after this. And then stretching over. Oh, lovely. And back into the center. And then two together. Now I'm going to raise the head up, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to come up in this fashion, very gently, let go, let go, let go, I've got you, I've got you. It's a very heavy head, but that's all right, I'm nice and strong. I'm going to come up, you can see I'm overlapping my hands, always supporting the head. You have to have white quite wide legs here in order to create that strength from underneath you. And then coming up, overlapping, and then I'm going to let the head tilt backwards, supporting the neck upwards. Sitting down and a gentle stretch. I'm going to do the same again. So separating out the clavicle, coming up, raising the head, let go, let go, let go coming down as far as I can and I'm splitting my fingers so that I go either side of the spine. I've got 29 people watching now, I've got lots of likes. And coming down. Now this time I've got my fingers in the line underneath the occiput. So the, the occiput is that hard bone at the base of the back of the skull. And this is called a neck release that we do in core therapy. And then I'm giving it a little stretch. I'm going to repeat this one more time because it's just so delicious. Coming up. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Ooh. And letting it tilt back. And stretch. Oh, and I do love ears. Stretching out those ears. Giving them a massage. Up the scalp and off. Repeating a couple of times. The whole area up the scalp and off. Up the scalp, lighter each time, and off. Oh, just enjoying that moment of beautiful residual energy. It's just magical. And then covering up, reassuring. And giving the client their space. So that was our live broadcast. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a delight. Thank you for your questions and comments and I will endeavor, um, hopefully my daughter or someone has screenshot the comments and questions so that I can get back to you and I will do so maybe with a live video next time or with um, another video I'll broadcast. And I think Jez is asleep. I'm just about hanging on. You're hanging on. Okay. Well, you've done very well. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was <laughs> beautiful. Oh, bless you. Oh, yes, you have a wonderful day as well. Thank you for your comments. And thank you for joining in. And I'll see you again next time. Gonna say bye. Bye bye. <laughs>